Hey guys, I'm Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today we're doing something a little bit different. We're printing huge massive prints to change our studio from looking bland and boring into something really, really cool. So for a few years now, the F-Stopper studio has had these three awkward windows built into the wall and I always thought, wouldn't it be really cool to print some huge massive prints and hide these horrible windows and make our studio look a little bit more professional? I feel like I don't print enough, but when I do print, I really appreciate it. So this was a cool way to hide the windows and also get some nice artwork in our studio. So of course there's all sorts of companies that do different types of printing, but when we were in New York City recently for Photo Plus, we ran across the company Whitewall. They print on canvas, on paper, they even print on metal, but their specialty is printing images and then encapsulating them with acrylic in front. So I thought this would be a really cool and slick way to present the photos in the studio and ultimately that's who we printed these images through. The hardest part about this whole project was actually finding three vertical images that I thought were worthy of being printed. So if you read fstoppers.com, you're probably familiar with these three images that we're gonna print, but I still have to figure out which papers that I wanna print on. And since White Wall, they offer a variety of papers, I'm going to narrow it down to three papers. One's gonna be the Fuji Gloss, the other's gonna be a Fuji Matte Paper, and then they also do a really cool Kodak metallic paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and send these three images off to the printer to do a couple eight by tens in these three different papers. And when they arrive here in Charleston, we're gonna figure out which papers we're going to print on for each one of these images. So here it is guys, I just got this in the mail. This is our test prints straight from White Wall. Um, this came all the way from Germany. I'm excited to see these pictures. I think these are like eight by tens or so. And we'll get a very close up look at the actual images that are gonna go behind the acrylic installation. So let's go ahead and open this up and see how these prints look. Here I have all three of the prints printed on different types of paper. And as you can see, the reflections are very different. The matte paper on the left has the least reflection, while the glossy and metallic papers, they both have a lot more reflections. But I think to see which paper I wanna choose, I really need to mount these up on the wall. All right, so I've taped everything up here. Uh, just so you guys can see, these are the matte pictures. This is the glossy. And then over here on the right is the metallic images. And honestly, like, if these are all mounted flat and flush, like they will be, I don't think the canned lights that I have in the studio really present too many problems. Obviously, if I get really close, I'm gonna be able to see the lights reflecting, but when I stand back where the camera's at, I mean, they all look pretty good. So what I've done now is I've turned on an LED light that I've put way up in the ceiling, and it's replicating the track lighting that I'm going to install when we put these images up on the wall. And now I think I've kind of changed my opinion. I think that different papers actually look better for the different images. So I think looking at this, I'm deciding that I might go matte on the Curacao image. I might go glossy here on the star shot. And then for the New York skyline image, I think the metallic looks the best. So I don't think I really expected to print on three different papers, but I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna print on the matte, the glossy, and the metallic paper. And what this is gonna allow me to do is compare all three of these papers huge but I'm pretty confident that I'm also printing all three of these images on the best possible paper for each individual photograph. So now that we've chosen the paper for each one of these individual photographs, let's put our order into white wall. They're going to print the image, they're gonna mount it to acrylic, and then when we get them back here, we're gonna install them on this wall and look at them up close and personal. Ordering these prints off whitewall.com was extremely easy and I found it really refreshing that I didn't have to use the software Rose, which so many other companies rely on. I find that that's kind of clunky and, and difficult to use, but with Whitewall, you simply upload your images straight to their website, choose the size of print you wanna make, and then you choose a few extra options like if you wanna frame or not, how thick do you want the acrylic glass, and what type of hardware you want mounted on the back of the print. Now that I have my order placed, it's simply time to wait for the images to show up here at the studio. Some huge packages just arrived outside the studio. I think these are our prints. Let's go check it out. Those things came really quick. Didn't you, you ordered these like two weeks ago. All the way from Europe and they're already here. That's awesome. Man, I'm excited. I can't wait to see these. Should we open them up and uh, check them out? Good. 
As you can imagine, with anything that's shipped overseas, these photos were packaged really, really well. So well, in fact, that David and I even had a little bit of a challenge getting them open. Once we got all three images unpacked, it was now time to figure out how to mount these. And since the prints were exactly the same height as the windows, it proved to be actually kind of a challenge. Luckily, I was up for the task and had a clever way to mount these images. Before I could actually hang these prints, I needed to make a frame around the window so that I could conceal the windows and also offer a nice base for the print to lean up against. Now on these larger prints, they ship with a large aluminum rail, and I found that with the right screws, I could actually mount the print directly on the head of the screws and they would lock into place. This made hanging the print so incredibly easy. The prints I wound up going with were 60 inches by 40 inches, and while they don't necessarily weigh a whole lot, having two people to mount this to the wall is definitely recommended. So as you can see, we got the prints hung on the wall. They look really cool. They look better than even I thought they would look. Um, but one thing that I feel like is really lacking is the prints aren't lit themselves. I do have some can lights here in our studio that give a kind of an ambient light but it doesn't do enough for the prints themselves. So if you want that really impactful look that you might see in a photo gallery or a studio that does fine art prints, you're going to have to light your photos. But before I install lighting into the ceiling, I'm going to use one of our little studio LED lights and move it around and see exactly where I want to position the lights that I do install. From looking at this, I can tell I'm going to want the lights to hit low on the frame so that it lights up parts of New York City without making the sky too bright. But I think if I install the right lights in the ceiling that kind of move, I'll be able to dial it in perfectly. But this looks incredible. I really love the way this metallic paper looks on this print. It really makes it come alive and look uh, very 3D. So now that I know that the New York shot's gonna look great, let's see uh, what some of these other shots look like with the spotlight on them from above. So here we are guys, we got the gallery lights installed and this wall now looks really, really cool. This turned out better than I could have expected. And there were a few little things that I wound up doing that I think made this even more practical. For the overhead lights, I decided to use lights that had two LED lights built into them instead of a track lighting system. This just kept the ceiling nice and clean, but it allowed me to have two lights on the prints, which helped light them up a little bit better. I also decided to install a vacancy switch, and this would just allow the wall to be illuminated anytime there was motion in the studio. One little note about this Curacao image, this actually had to be mounted to acrylic that had a matte finish as opposed to the matte paper. I think this print turned out great, but it is actually printed on a shinier paper than what I thought when I ordered the print. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is that these prints are pretty expensive, and that's because I printed them and mounted them to the thick acrylic glass. You can definitely print something much cheaper if you just choose to have the paper mounted to a cardstock. And I think those images at the same size run about $200, where these were about $800 each. So all in all, I think this project turned out really great and I'm now excited that our photo studio actually looks like a real photo studio. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little different than the normal content that we produce on this YouTube channel, but since this was the first time I printed this large, I wanted to document exactly how we printed these images and got them installed on the wall. If you wanna make your own prints and print them in your studio or in your home, head over to whitewall.com and check out the link below in the description because we have an exclusive F-Stoppers discount code that's going to save you some money on your own prints. For more photography related videos, head over to fstoppers.com and don't forget to subscribe to the F Stoppers YouTube channel below.